Pastor Julian here with Central's Devotion for Today. I hope you're doing well. This past Sunday, I got to preach on the Sermon on the Mount, uh, Matthew chapter 6, and it was a segment of the Sermon on the Mount. And in my message, I brought up a passage of Scripture um, to help make a point. But I would like to take a deeper look at that passage of Scripture, and it's the Apostle Paul's letter to Titus. Titus is the, one of the Apostle Paul's two younger disciples that he's training as leaders, and they're leading in uh, Titus and Timothy in, in various areas uh, of where Paul's ministry was. And they traveled with, with Paul. And so this is a letter that Paul has written to Titus. And we're going to take a look at Titus chapter 2, verses 11 to 14. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 to 14. And this is what the Apostle Paul writes. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live in self and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. This comes uh, in a portion of the letter where he's talking about the importance of doctrine and how, uh, how older men and women are supposed to behave, uh, especially in setting an example and teaching younger women and younger men. So, Let's take a look at what, what Paul wrote here. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people. The grace of God, of course, being Jesus Christ himself, appearing in the world and bringing salvation for all people, for all people who will receive it. And then he says, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions. So Jesus, who, who, who is the grace of God and appeared, bringing salvation for all people, and he trained his disciples to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions. If you want to dig deeper into ungodliness, that is, doing things that God doesn't want you to do and to live as if God would want you to live, that's called godliness. And you can figure out what, what is and is not godly by reading the Bible. Also, your conscience uh, can help guide you with that to a point. Some of our consciences, unfortunately, uh, have a bad compass. So scripture is what helps keep us with a due north when it comes to godliness. And so we need to un renounce ungodliness and worldly passions. You think about what is ungodly and worldly, and that is what you are supposed to renounce. Uh, and, and live for God, and here it says, and to live a self-controlled, upright, and godly life in this present age. So you're supposed to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions. Worldly passions could be um, money, uh, power, pride. Um, it could be uh, pleasures of the flesh, 
uh, alcohol, other things of that nature. It, it could be various things that just have to do with the world binding you, uh, chaining you. See, when you have those worldly passions, you are enslaved to the world. And so he wants you to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and instead lead a life, live a life that has that is controlled, like that you're actually conscious of what you are are doing, thinking about what you're doing, self-controlled, upright, good, godly lives. And I want to highlight this for you. And when are you supposed to do this? He says, in the present age. So, training us to renounce ungodliness, worldly passions, and live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. Is he talking about the present age as it was back then, uh, when during Jesus' time, or is he talking about in the present age always, always, whatever age you are living in, the present age? I say it's the second. Uh, we It is telling us that in our present age, that we need to renounce worldly possessions, live self-controlled and upright and godly lives. And as we are doing this, we wait for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So as we are living these godly lives, these upright lives, where we have renounced the things of this world, we are doing it with an eye to the future of when Jesus is going to return. And we we can uh, we have this blessed hope that it says this. We we we're hoping we know that He's going to come. Do you ever do you ever have a loved one go away on a trip for a while, and you just were eager to see them again. You longed for them to be back in your presence. Maybe it's a loved one who lives far away and you're just, you, you know, they're going to come back. Maybe it's during a holiday or you're just excited. Um, this is how we live as we're living our godly, self-controlled, upright lives. We have this excitement and this blessed hope that Jesus is coming back. And it says, who gave himself for us, Jesus, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. So Jesus purified us for himself, that we are a people of his own possession. We are his. We are no longer ours. If we believe in him, we have given our lives to him, and we are living our lives for him. And so that's why the Apostle Paul says, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain, because to live is Jesus. I am living for Jesus. I am his I am his own possession, pure and holy, prepared for heaven, ready to be with him for eternity. But while I'm here, I am his people, person, and I am zealous to do good works. If you are Christ's, you are his, and you are here on earth, zealous to do good works, waiting for that day that he's going to return again. Friends, we have a great and glorious Savior, and I want to encourage you that in this present age, that you look at your lives and that you give up your worldly passions, give up and renounce ungodliness, live your life for Jesus, because you're his, and you're pure because he gave his life for you on the cross. He bought you at a price. And now you're his possession, meant to be out in this world zealously, 
doing good works on his behalf. God bless you and have a great day.